I hope you found the first video in our series on building scalable applications in the cloud useful. In this episode, we're going to talk about the load balancing tier, and I'm going to delve into some of the best practices and tips and tricks that you can use for building a load balancing tier of your scalable web application. In the first video of this series, we introduced the reference architecture you see here and discussed briefly some of the tiers within this architecture. In today's video, we're going to focus on the load balancing tier and talk about mechanisms that you can use to accept your user traffic and distribute it to the app servers behind the scenes. Now the vast majority of Riseskill users use one of two main solutions to handle their load balancing needs. The first being HAProxy, or High Availability Proxy, possibly in concert with Apache. If SSL termination is necessary, Apache will do that SSL termination, pass the traffic off to HAProxy, which then load balances it to the application servers behind the scenes. Now since HAProxy and Apache are running on a typical cloud-based instance, the normal accesses are available. For example, you can SSH into that instance, look at the memory utilization, run top on the box, etc. Additionally, HAProxy provides a status web page that you can access that will give you information on connection statistics, number of failed connections, number of connections currently in use, the distribution to the back-end web servers, etc. And with newer versions of HAProxy, versions 1.3 and newer, they have provided a server stat socket that you can connect to programmatically and download that information in real time. Now when you run HAProxy on an instance, each of these instances can handle a specific amount of traffic with no ramp up time. We tend to liken it to a fixed width pipe, and you can use as little of that pipe or as much of that pipe as you want in an instant. Now, with that said, each instance can only handle that specific amount of traffic, and if you were to overflow the width of that pipe, if you will, you have to add another pipe. And that's why we always uh, recommend adding HAProxy uh, servers ahead of time to handle the uh, anticipated traffic, because the addition of load balancers is possible, but it requires DNS modifications. Now, the other solution that a lot of our customers will use is AWS's Elastic Load Balancer, or ELB. Now it's important to note that the ELB is an Amazon specific solution at this time and therefore is, it's not cloud agnostic, not cloud portable if you will, and that needs to be factored into any new scalable web application that you design. Uh, SSL termination has been recently added so you can now terminate SSL traffic at the ELB. And the ELB can scale, can scale to handle large amounts of traffic, but historically that has been a little slow to ramp up, although Amazon has provided infrastructure and architecture improvements to handle that ramp up time, uh, to speed that ramp up time up a bit. Additionally, options do exist for pre-warming the ELB. You can contact AWS directly and tell them that you're going to uh, have some uh, traffic coming in here shortly and you need to have it spun up to handle additional capacity. Or you can kind of pre-warm it yourself by throwing fake traffic at it, perhaps running Apache Bench or HTT Perf, something along those lines, to scale it up to the size that you need for that anticipated user event. Now you only need one, and that is a nice thing about the ELB. It will scale to accommodate your traffic load, but it is essentially a load balancing appliance, and as such you don't have access or visibility into the inner workings, so you can't look at connection rates and failures and any of the statistics that you may want and that you could do with HAProxy. Now some of our customers, that doesn't matter. They just want an appliance that they throw out there and it does the load balancing for them and that's all that they need. Other customers want to have much more visibility into their user traffic, and as such the ELB might not be a good solution in that, in that case. Uh, the last bullet here mentions that Riseskill has a technical white paper on the load balancing solutions that we've evaluated, which includes HAProxy, ELB, as well as some solutions from our partners AI Cache and Zeus. Uh, it has a lot more detail and information on the statistics, the tests we ran, things along those lines. And it's available, as you see, at uh, riseskill.com slash whitepapers. Now I'd like to take a minute to talk about the load balancer plus application server setup that you'll see in the tutorial section on the support portion of the Riseskill website. And as the name implies, you have a load balancer and an application server that are co-resident on the same server. And these are typically used in pairs of two, such that a load balancer can load balance to its own application server as well as to the other application server. And while this is definitely a possible architecture, and it's very good for test and dev in that it saves on infrastructure costs, in the situation we're discussing here, for example, you'd only need two servers as opposed to four. Uh, it's not a best practice for a production environment and therefore not recommended. Uh, in a scalable web application, you really want to keep each of the tiers of your application independent so that you can diagnose, troubleshoot, and scale each of them independently. As you see here, you know traffic spikes can cause that instance to perform poorly, and then such you end out with a poor load balancer and a poor application server. Speaking of recommendations, if you're not going to use the ELB solution, we recommend a minimum of two load balancers, and each of these load balancers should be in a different availability zone, and that should increase the availability and reliability of your overall application. 
If an availability zone was to suffer an outage for whatever reason, only the portion of your application that was in that availability zone would be affected and the other portions would re remain up and accessible to your end users. Now, Some testing that RightScale has done has shown that the AWS size M1 large is a pretty good choice for load balancers. There's roughly a 100,000 to 120,000 packet per second limit through the virtual interface on those cloud-based instances and the larger instances don't provide you more a virtual interface capacity, if you will. They provide you additional CPU and memory, but since the load balancer is not CPU or memory intensive at that point, they don't gain you much. Uh, as such, we were able to push about 5,000 responses per second through an M1 large, and our payload was very small, and we were looking really at just how many connections could we crank through an individual HA proxy box at any given time. So with that 5,000 threshold in mind, what we recommend is try to estimate your uh, peak traffic. Divide that by 5,000, hopefully add a little bit of padding, and that should be how many HA proxy boxes you need to accomplish your scalable web application needs. Now for more details and additional information on the test we ran and some more numbers and statistics, please do refer to that white paper that we discussed previously. So those are the steps for structuring your load balancing tier. In the next video of the series, we'll talk about how to set up your application server tier.